Word Defibrillator for today, where we trust God for a word from within the Word. Now, I wanted to go back just a little bit before the scripture, but I feel it's just all in one. So there is maybe two words that we're going to be receiving out of this. But do you enjoy camping? Do you? Well, let's go and ensure that we can go camping and spend some time with Jesus in a tent. <laughs> True is... True, there is nothing to be gained by it. So this is 2 Corinthians 12. There is nothing to be gained by it, but as I am obliged to boast, I will go on to visions and revelations of the Lord. I know a man in Christ who 14 years ago, whether in the body or out of the body, I do not know, God knows, was caught up to the third heaven. And I know that this man, whether in the body or away from the body, I do not know, God knows, was caught up into paradise, and he heard utterances beyond the power of man to put into words, which man is not permitted to utter. Of the same man's experience I will boast, but of myself personally I will not boast, except as regards of my infirmities and my weaknesses. Should I desire to boast, I shall not be witless braggart, for I shall be speaking the truth. But I abstain from it so that no one from, may form a higher estimate of me than is justified by what he sees in me or hears from me. And to keep me from being puffed up and too much elated by exceeding greatness and preeminence of these revelations, there was given me a thorn, a splinter in the flesh, a messenger of Satan to rack and buffet and harass me to keep me from being excessively exalted." Wow, what a statement. So here I've had these amazing utterances, just like this other guy that he's spoken about, and I could boast. I mean, I could really put myself on the top of the food chain, be the man, main man with the power for the hour, but I'm not going to, because I do not want anybody to have a higher estimation of me. And there was given me a thorn, a splinter in the flesh, a messenger of Satan, and that is there to buffer and harass me, to keep me from being excessively exalted. Now, there we have all things in our lives where we have a moment where we realize, if it wasn't for God, where would I be? Three times I called upon the Lord, verse 8, that's 2 Corinthians 12, verse 8 in the Amplified. My grace, my favor and loving kindness and mercy is enough for you. Oh, sorry, let's go back. Sorry, I'm reading one ahead. Um, Verse 8, three times I called upon the Lord and besought him about this and begged that it might depart from me. This is the thorn in his flesh. But he said to me, my grace, my favor and loving kindness and mercy is enough for you, sufficient against any danger and enables you to bear the trouble manfully. <laughs> Does this not say that you and I will come across danger? And we will have troubles. We will have a thorn in our flesh. That one thing that just will not go away. That keeps on reminding us that we are only great because of Jesus Christ. You think you're great? I spend a lot of time with people helping them restore their lives. And they do really, really bad things like in business. I'll never forget this one guy in business. That... Uh, did really, really unethical things to do well in business. And then he had a personal crisis that came upon his life. And because of that, he just lost everything, absolutely everything. And in his lowest of lows, he decided to give his life to Christ, which happens to many of us. And God turned his life around incredibly. And he stood up, dusted himself off, and he started to progress into a wonderful relationship with God. And then when he was nice and stable, he decided, you know what, I'm going to go back into business. And then immediately he starts doing the unethical things that he used to do to get the business up and running. And it's like, hold on a second. You can't do that. You can't go back to those old things and do it. And it just became a thorn in his flesh. But you know what? God's favor and loving kindness, his grace, his mercy is enough, 
sufficient against any danger and enables us to bear the trouble manfully. For my strength and power are made perfect, fulfilled and completed and show themselves most effective in your weakness. You know, we get taught in our culture to be tough, uh, especially as men. Don't cry. A statement the other day by a father, do you want me to give you something to cry about? It's not going to happen. Because here it says that in your weakness, therefore, our will, all the more gladly glory in my weakness and infirmities. Do you really want to say that? I think so. God's grace, favor, and loving kindness and mercy is enough for you, sufficient against any danger, and enables you to bear the troubles manfully. For my strength and power are made perfect, fulfilled and completed, and show themselves most effective in your weakness. My word. Stop trying to be strong. Put it down. Walk away. Say, Father, I can't do this. I really, really can't do this. I am weak. Sometimes I'm going to tell you, I, I want you to mess up as much as you can. Just, just go do it. Just don't worry about whether you're going to get it right or wrong. Don't worry even if you're strong. Just, just do your best to try and mess it up. Because you see, when you mess up and you're really, really weak, this is where God shows up. And some of us are in that space at this moment in time. Therefore, I will all the more gladly glory in my weakness and infirmities, that the strength and the power of Christ, the Messiah, may rest, yes, may pitch a tent over and dwell upon me. So I told you that we can go camping. Because in your weakness, when you declare, I cannot do this, as Jesus was in the garden going, Father, please take this cup from me. I can't do this. Please. And then turning around, you know, in his absolute weakness, sweating blood, turns around and says, you know what? No longer my will, but your will be done. In there was the strength. So for us, Second Corinthians 12 verse 10, so for the sake of Christ, I am well pleased and take pleasure in infirmities, insults, hardships, persecution, perplexities, and distress. For when I am weak in human strength, then truly I am strong, able, powerful, in divine strength. Here. Let's hear that again. So for the sake of Christ, I am well pleased and take pleasure in infirmities. This is a tough one to say. I take pleasure in insults, hardships, persecutions, perplexities, and distresses. Why? Well, for when I am weak in human strength, then am I truly strong, able, powerful, in divine strength because of Christ. Heavenly Father, what an awesome, awesome revelation. And Father, we know that awe has a little bit of nervousness in it. A little bit of intrepidation. Going, Whew, I hope I can do this. Well, that's the point. We can't. Father, we know that we are weak. Therefore, we are strong in Christ Jesus. And for Christ's sake, Father, we will be well pleased and take pleasure in our infirmities, our insults, our hardships, our persecutions, our perplexities and distresses. For when we are weak, we know, Father, that we are truly strong, able, powerful, in divine strength. And Father, we thank you that that divine strength manifests physically in all our situations and just cleans it all up just destroys the works of the enemies, delivers us from those infirmities, those insults, those hardships, and Father puts us in a place where we can stand in victory, that people will look upon us and they're just going to want to know the Jesus we know. Father, how tough it is to endure these times. 
that it breaks us down to absolute weakness. But in there lies the glory. And I thank you for that glory manifested, Father. It is an exciting thought to know that if this is where we are now, and we just admit that weakness, Father, deliverance is here. And I thank you, Father, in our lives today for that deliverance, a physical manifestation of your rescue. Lord Jesus, may you rest, may you pitch a tent over and dwell upon us. Amen. 